Now, what, what do you think about when you think about the name Joe Pistone? What, what comes to mind when you think about Joe Pistone? Well, Joe was, uh, I remember I got in the bureau in 80 and in 81, uh, I met Joe and I actually have an autograph book of his. Uh, Joe is like one of the many pioneers of undercover. There was a handful of guys, guys like Willie Reagan, Paul Branna, Eddie Robb, et cetera. Joe was one of them. And, and keep in mind, people don't understand this, but undercover work is an investigative scenario, just like it is in surveillance or wiretaps. That's all it is. And sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're successful, other times you're not. Other times your original plan snowballs into a bigger plan. Joe being one of the, uh, uh, I guess, um, for lack of a better word, pioneers of this, he was at a time when, and I saw this change in the Bureau. When I first started doing Undercover, there was nobody watching you 24-7. You were kind of on your own. You did what you had to do, and then you came back. You called the case agent, and you met him, and you talked to him. You told him what went on. But now that's changed to, you know, you got full coverage on you. Uh, Joe, what he did, I thought he did an excellent job with it. Uh, in that again, he's one of the pioneers, him and Eddie Robb uh, was another guy that they worked together in some case and they set the groundwork for us to, to do these cases, you know? So I got, I got a, a question for you. I asked him, I'm curious to know what you're going to say about this. I asked, uh, Joe, when we did the interview, I said, Joe, you know, I've interviewed other mobsters and you sound more like you're a mobster than mobsters sound like they're a mobster. You dress like one, you put the glasses, you're quiet, you don't say a lot, you watch, you're very calculating, et cetera, et cetera. I said, I said, did it ever get to a point, because this is my assumption, and I said, I want to hear your answer. I said, did it ever get to a point where you enjoy the life too much, so much that you wanted to drag it out where the FBI finally said, you kind of crossed the line. You, you could have solved this two, three years ago, but you've dragged this out for six years because we're under the impression that you're actually enjoying the life. And uh, I, if you've seen the interview, you'll know what he said, but I'm curious to know, what do you think? Do you think it got to a point where maybe Joe was enjoying the life a little bit too much and he didn't want to get away from it? You know, uh, I've never experienced that. And I'll tell you why I've, I've worked over a hundred undercover cases as well as countless by bus. So my career is I jump from one case to the other. So if you have a case and it's good and it's give you all the toys, I mean, I played everything from big, I've driven Rolls Royces, 500 E, uh, Hummers H2s, Hummer H1s. I, I've driven all and I've had everything. And for me, it was like, okay, you shut it down. Hey, Maybe you're short-sighted and shutting it down, but I'll move on to another case. I think Joe is one of those guys who worked maybe a handful of cases. So I don't know the background of why he wants uh, to keep it going. But the, my thing has always been, and I've had fights. And in fact, if reading my book at the end, I have fights with management because I've always was trained on the covers that when you work a case, you walk up the ladder is everything has to go. You try to get, as long as you're gathering evidence, as long as you're pursuing, as long as there's nobody's life at danger or there are no threats, you keep marching until you can't march anymore. Unfortunately, in my case, after two and a half years, almost three, they pulled the plug for no reason. There was no, nobody didn't believe that I was anything but Jack Falcone. My life was not in danger. I wish I would have gotten the five or six years that Joe got. You know, so, but it wasn't, it was curtailed for whatever reason. Now, did that upset me and the United States attorneys that worked the case and the case agents? Absolutely. But what can we do? We're just points. So I moved on to another case and did what I had to do. In hindsight, yes, the case was successful. We took down the administration of the post Gotti, but you know, I wish we could have had more time. I wanted to even go to the possibility of getting straightened out so I can introduce other agents uh, into the fold and maybe try to get that 32 into whatever to dismantle the uh, the whole group. So were you ever in it where, where, where Jack, were you ever in it where you're like, man, I'm, I enjoy this life. Was there anything about it that got you enamored where you were enjoying the life and you didn't want to leave it? Well, you know, if you talk to people about, I've enjoyed you have to enjoy working undercover no matter what you're doing. I mean, I've enjoyed flying jet planes with 
drug dealers. You know, I, I all we enjoyed. I mean, the toys, the 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 pink earring, the Rolex uh, president watch, the the money. I used to carry a knot like five G's in my pocket. Now you ask me, lucky I got ten dollars on me. You know. Yes, I used to walk in a restaurant. Waiters trip themselves over to try to take care of Big Jackie Boy. You know how many do now? I get sent to the bar and wait for my table. You know, these are all changes that are adjusted. Yes, when you're out and undercover, you're acting. You take this persona because you, in order to catch a criminal, you have to think and act like a criminal. Yep. So you have to play the roles, but you have to also understand that this is temporary. I had clothes. I had... Um, Xenia suits that were bought with government funds that I had to return. Even my underwear and socks. Now, Come who on. is going to buy a 66 Come long so suit? Yes, because it's property. So I've learned all my career. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned through my career, that, you know, Patrick, that enjoy it. Go out there, enjoy it. Hey, listen, it's dangerous. Keep your eyes we used to go to, when I was undercover, we go to these restaurants. We take over these restaurants that were in contact. We have five or six wise guys with about five strippers. You know what I'm saying? There was live champagne was flowing. I mean, I, it, it, this is what these guys do. You go out. Sometimes I went for Manny Petty's. Never had a Manny Petty until I was with the mob. You know, I had cucumbers. You know, I just think like, Hillary would have known what a cucumber was. Hillary, right? Baldwin. But anyway, that's another story. But yeah, it, it is seductive. It's a seductive mistress. It's something that takes you over. And you got to be careful because you, it's going to end. And if you think it's going to go on forever, yeah. it's not. And if it starts affecting who you are, you better walk away. Uh, Jack, the 26 you were in as an FBI, how many years of it were you married? I got married in 84. So I was, uh, listen, my wife, I think, was a saint. Let me tell you, the success that I think I've had, okay, is because of her and my daughter. Okay, they grounded me. I Even though I never saw them because I have my own apartment, very rarely do I saw them. It was like when I spoke to them, and even if I missed a recital, even if I missed a holiday, okay, she didn't pressure me or get on me. And that's important because you need to have a clear head when you're out there with the bad guy, you don't need to have, oh, my God, my wife's mad at me. She's going to leave. She called yeah. me. Uh, she was very good. And I think because she lived in, with, in law enforcement uh, prior to that with her parents, then I think that's what made the edge. But marriage, I've seen this job, Patrick, where it's affected people's marriage. It's affected their drinking. I've, I've affected all kinds. Guys have gone to the dark side. Okay. The only thing this job did to me it's destroyed my weight, my weight. I mean, uh, I, I have issues because of that because I'd learned how to eat. But, hey, that could be worse. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, it, it, but it does do something to you. There's a lot of peril and not too many guys could sustain undercover. The guys who say, yeah, I worked undercover, what, one, two years? You know, when you're out there 15 years, 20 years, you know, it's grinding. It, it does things to you, yeah. you know? So you're still married to the same wife from 1984. That is correct. Let me, I mean, she deserves a purple, she deserves a, <laughs> a, a medal, medal of honor yeah. type of deal. She does. And my daughter was born in the year 2000. Keep in mind, because I was never home. So yes, if you do the math, she was 2000. And then when I left the bureau in 2005, okay, I went from driving Greg De Palma, a captain in the Gambino crime family, to driving my five-year-old daughter around. And Patrick, let me tell you, there's no difference. They both want things, buy me this, get me that, and get me this. Nonstop. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, you, you know, it, it, I, I hear these stories, and I think with Pistone as well, I think he's still married to the same wife, by the way. You know, he is still married to the same wife. So, it's interesting, both of you guys haven't served as long as you did, and you're still married to the same woman, and you lived a very difficult life of a person to stay married to. That is true. And it was weird, because when I would come home, those rare moments... Way, did she know what she did? She knew what she did. She knew I was in the FBI, and of but course, she didn't undercover. She worked undercover. No, no, she didn't know. She did know I was working undercover, because I would come in to see her. You know, How do you explain having an S500 Mercedes? 
And, you know, when you're driving a regular car. So all the toys, you know, the ring, like my wife would say to me, we got to go to the recital. You go there, you're looking like a gangster. You got the ring, the Rolex watch. My daughter kept saying, I want to take daddy to show your daddy what he does at work. What are you going to say? Yeah, my name is Jack Falcone. I am a, a Gam an associate in the Gambino crime family. So you, you miss and it does stick with you being undercover. It's very seductive. And I understand why guys go bad and things have done because it, not too many people could could do it or put up with it.